and welcome to another episode of FUBAR! In today's episode we are going to change in the fly as soon as they change parameters in our serverless framework functions that were deployed. If you want to watch more content about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices you should also subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So this is the third video in the series of configuration management or environment variables, I don't know how I call it. And in the first video I mentioned the problem that using the parameter store and then serverless framework then the functions will adopt the parameter on deployment time and then if you change that parameter you need to redeploy the function and that's pretty annoying. So in this video I want to show you how you can automatically as soon as parameter change the parameter will also change in the in the function so for that we are going to use a middleware called midly and i will show you how to use midly so let's go to the code and get started so the first thing we want to do is to go and get the code we have built in the parameter store video I will go to the github repo, I will leave the link below and you can clone that into your computer with a different name. I will clone it with the name midi parameter test, very original. I get into there and then I will just open it with atom as always. The next thing we want to do is to add a couple of parameters. These are just normal parameters, they are not encrypted but they could be encrypted, it works the same. So I will just put this parameter midi test value one with the value a type string in the us east one so then we can call that parameter in our code so i will change that in the serverless yaml and then i will put the right region because the project that comes from the github has wrong region and i will just put the service name with a different name and that should be all the changes we need to do we can deploy this and we can see what happens so I will speed this up until we get the URL. So when we get the URL, we can check it out in Postman and we can see that we get back the ah. Uh, so now if we go to our AWS console, to the system manager, where the parameter stores live, we can change the value in the parameter store of this parameter that we just created to B. And we can save the changes. And now we can go back to Postman and we can see if the value ever gets updated from A to B. Doesn't matter how long we wait, it doesn't happen. Just spoiling you the movie. In order for this value to change, we need to deploy the function again, and then I will speed the deployment. Because nothing really changed in the code, it just changed the parameters, and now it's fetching the new parameter and it's putting it in the in the bundle and now if we go to postman after this is deployed you have exactly the same URL we have exactly everything the same we just get B so this is not very convenient because of many reasons we have talked in the video introduction of this series so we want to solve this problem we will use MIDI MIDI is a Node.js middleware for Lambda it has a lot of functionalities the idea of behind MIDI is to help you with the common technical concerns outside of your business logic, like input parsing, validation, output serialization, error handling, and also fetching parameters. And then all this code that is not your business logic end up polluting your business logic and you need to write tests for it and it becomes hard to read and to maintain. To solve this problem, MIDI used the middleware pattern. This pattern allows developers to isolate the common technical concerns into steps that decorate the main business logic. Middleware functions are generally written as independent models and then are plugged into the applications in a configuration step. This way the business logic is not polluted. MIDI is a middleware for AWS Lambda. So when you use MIDI, you write your Lambda handlers as usual, focusing on your business logic, then you can import MIDI and use the middleware you want, we will use the SSM middleware and then you can grab your handler in the MIDI factory function and this will return an enhanced instance of this original handler that then you can attach the middleware to. There are many available middlewares, we are going to use one called SSM. Uh, I link the link for MIDI and the middleware in the link in the description box so you can go and check it out. 
and SSM will fetch the parameters from the AWS parameter store. By default, the parameters are placed in environmental variables, but we don't want that. We want instead to use the flag set to context to true to get the parameter and store them in the context object of the function. So let's go and do this in our code. So the first thing we want to do is to install MIDI, as I said. So we do npm install MIDI save. Then we can go to the documentation and we can go step by step. We have done that. And now we can go and import, require the MIDI module, the MIDI library in our handler.js. Then we will require the middleware. As I say, we will use the SSM middleware. But if we have others, we can require them there. And then we will have the original handler, our business logic here. So we will grab the code that we have in the business, uh, in the handler method dot hello, and we'll just copy paste it into there. So now there we just uh, will change the secret value that is an environmental variable to find it from the context.value1. So this is using the SSM middleware that will put the parameter in the context of the function and we will define that it will be in a object uh, in a variable named value one. We will do that in a second. Good. So now I can continue with the instructions. It says that now we have our handler that it's uh, wrapping the original handler, so we will do that. So first we are going to do module export hello, and then we are going to put the MIDI handler. It, this is a error, I edited it out and I could not find the piece of code. It should say original handler instead of handler, if not this will fail. So then we will use the SSM uh, middleware, and there we will put the parameters of the SSM middleware. If we have other middlewares, we will just put them in a chain in the order we want them to be applied. So the first one is cache. We want the cache um, for this to be true, so we will have a cache, in this case one minute cache, but we can define it for longer periods. I would recommend it longer periods because the parameter store has some kind of limitations in the amount of requests you can do at the same time. So this uh, having the cache is good because if you have a lot of consecutive functions running at the parallel functions running at the same time, this can uh, damage your parameter store. So put it true, I will set it to one just for an example, but you can set it for longer periods. I would recommend you to have it longer periods. Then we will use the flag set to context to true. So it appears in the context object of the function and then we will define which values. So the name of the values, we will have value one. That is the one that we uh, just added in the parameter store MIDI uh, test value one. And that's it. Now we can just uh, remove all the extra things. We remove the extra module that we don't need anymore. And we save this file. And then we go back to serverless YAML and we can do a couple of things there. The first thing is to remove the secret value as we are uh, we're used to because we don't want that way anymore. So we can remove the custom parameter and the environment because now we are fetching it with MIDI. The next thing we are going to do is give permissions to this Lambda to access to get the parameter that we created because uh, the serverless framework was handling that for us, but now we need to give permissions. So I will add that in my I am uh, role statement. And to do that, I will use the Soto parameter serverless framework plugin. I have created a video on that, so you can go and check it out. This is how you use it and you should install it and uh, put everything in place. But I will not go into the details of this. You can go and check the video out if you're interested in this plugin. I think it's a very handy plugin. Then after this, we have everything ready to deploy. So we can run SLS, SLS deploy and then we can uh, wait for the project to get deployed. So now I will speed the deployment up as always and until we get the URL. And now with that URL, I put it in Postman and we get the bay. So now I will go back to the system manager um, in AWS and then I will edit that to say. My examples are so good today. And then we will wait for one minute. That is the validity of the cache. So I will go back to Postman and I will press send, send, send until one minute has passed. And then in some point we will see that it changed from B to C. So really convenient. So now we have the C and 
this is how it works. It's really simple to use MIDI and it's very convenient and this is how you can have your parameters to change without needing to redeploy your functions. So yeah, that's good. Uh, the code for this project is available in GitHub. I leave you the link for the project in the description box so you can check it out. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns or whatever you want to see in this channel, let me know in the comment box below. I like making content that you want to watch. And around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.